Well hello there, this is John Fuller. I'm going to today start a painting of a very very popular town called En Fleur in Normandy. I've been there many many times. I love going there, I love painting there and this is a favourite scene of the customs house. Uh, I've done I've, I've briefly sketched it up. I've done a tonal, a very, very brief tonal, um, for the simple reason is it's it's quite a big, big scene, and I, I don't want to put too many darks in. I've made the a front a point of focus on the custom house, and you'll see that there are some blinds here on the left hand side. Now in reality these blinds are a beautiful red. Now if I put a red on them it's going to draw the eye from the customs house to the blinds which I don't really want to do. So I'm going to paint them another colour. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to do but we'll get there. But I'll tell you a little bit about the brushes I use mainly, and they are mops. Um, I should be using three mops today, which are these. I should be using a reservoir point, which is a lovely brush because it holds the moisture and the water in the bulb of the brush, and you get a very, very fine needle point. And another brush I use a lot is called a sword rigger. This holds a tremendous amount of water, but it gives a lovely point. And when I, I because this, this scene is in fact a very flat scene on the water, to give it interest, I need to put some darks in here. So I'm going to be putting some, some ripples, and that's the ideal brush to do it with. It holds the paint, and you can apply the ripples very, very finely. We're going to put a very, very simple wash on the sky. I'm going to try and, and, and create um, a bluish sky with, with clouds, um, which will reflect in the water down here. The palette I should be using today is the one I use when I go on plan air, which is a very small, typical Binning Monroe palette, not made completely as his style. It's made by John, a guy called John Hartley in, in uh, England, in UK. It's called the uh, Little Brass Box Company. Um, a great palette. It's handmade. Nowadays they're costing somewhere in the region of £400. I bought this one several years ago. I had it made for me by John. And I was given the option, mostly you see these palettes with the side plates, just a flat plate. In fact, John gave me the option to actually create this into a bowl, which is far, far more useful as far as I'm concerned. Uh, on the reverse side is a, a little, a little um, ring, which I think you can see, which I stick your, your finger through, which gives a, a bit of solidarity. Right then, let's see if we can get this sky in. Um, I'm going to be using this big, a big mop. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm first going to mix up a, a blue, a nice blue, my method of doing the skies um, with this painting will be not to wet the paper <clears throat> primarily, uh, but to add a clean water as and where needed to give soft edges. So with that blue, I'm going to be adding a little bit of Naples yellow to give it a little bit of warmth. Right then, let's try and get it on.
The essence of doing a good sky is to not keep fiddling about. Lay in the basics, which we've done here. And now I'm going to move on to a little bit more warmth. Some hard, ed hard edges is nice to leave. Above the buildings here, I am going to give the warmth of the cloud. Because the roofs are in slate, so we want counter change. A little bit of shadow. I'm very tempted to go into there, but a sky <clears throat> is best left alone as I said earlier um, and let it work itself I'm going to leave that sky I think maybe just pale it up a little bit dry dry mop just to pull a little bit out here and there give it a little bit of relief Just break up that hard edge there. You've got to be very careful when you go back in that you don't put water onto it as such. Otherwise you end up with a cauliflower. <clears throat> I'm going to carry on <coughs> and put some blue, a base blue we used before, onto the whole of the, of the sea area here dropped it never mind this will give me a reference As I'm progressing, I can lose that in a minute. I don't pin my paper down. I use it under a frame which holds it. The sky is working okay. We'll leave that. There's no problem with that. It's going to tone right the way down. The water in the harbour here. Get that bit of hair off. As I say, it needs darkening up on the bottom edge. But while I'm waiting for the for the actual harbour paint to just get a little bit of gloss of it, I'm going to put some very thin wash on the buildings. Raw sienna, which comes off to a beautiful cream when it's dry, is, I'm going to mix up something slightly darker on that, um, on the water, slightly green. Sometimes this works fine, sometimes it doesn't. In fact, it's gone off. I've gone on to it too late. 
Never mind. Change brushes. I'm going to add some warmish grey to the buildings as a prime, prime coat. Doesn't matter if it bleeds into the adjoining wash because there are other washes going on top. It might look a little bit dark, but it's not, because when it dries off, now on the left hand side there, on the left hand side of the paper, you can see that I've left a white um, patch, but it, it's not going to be white, it's going to be grey, but I'm going to make it a little bit paler and fade it because I want to lose this end of the of the harbour buildings to accentuate on the on the ones on the right hand side so whatever's going to go on there Again, a little bit lighter. Right, we'll leave that to pull back. I'll just do this church spire. Perking up behind. I try and put colour on with the brush making marks just with one stroke if you can do it. Okay, well I'm nearly there to let this dry completely right off. Just very, very quick strokes. And then give them a little bit of base, a little change of colour. It's just a case of making marks. I hate to see trees all the same colour. You see so many people do it. It's still wet so it'll, it'll all blend in in a minute. And before they're dry, many people use it, I do it, I scrape out. I've got a palette knife which I scrape out 
the timing has got to be right otherwise you end up with black marks so once the shine has just gone off it gives a bit of depth it gives a bit of highlighting on the trees okay we'll leave those now i'm going to leave the whole of that to dry down and i'll come back and start again right off we go again as you can probably see i have in fact there is some some a little bit of parallax on the painting what we call parallax where it's tapering in on the sides it's because i tip the board up because i want some more runoff when i'm doing um the areas on the buildings i've already done the roofs um and the next thing we're going to do is to get some more color into the walls um, of this area here they're going to be running uh, warm to cool um, and we'll leave the shading and and the or the different colors until the later later part so now we're going to start getting some nice color Basically, it's raw sienna. I love raw sienna because it, it gives a beautiful, warm, bright colour on a painting. There we go. Now I'm going to come down to a little bit of a cooler shade. As we drop down, doesn't matter if you leave a little bit behind like that as you're painting it all adds nice texture and I'm going to add some quite bright blue into this to cool it off even more in the shadows areas that are formed with the overlap of the buildings but there i do like the variation in in that watercolor that watercolor gives You'll notice I'm not working from a photograph. It's because I've done this scene so many times. Um, and also, uh, a photograph uh, tends to tighten you up. I don't know why people do paint from photographs. I really don't. Right, we'll leave that and we'll come back. Uh, in later on to do the the windows and give a bit of <coughs> give a little bit of um, Venetian yellow because it's nice and cream and it adds to various things. Right, let's go on the 
on these roofs now. I'm trying to do a bit of a bit of variation. Otherwise it can make it a little bit boring. Because all roofs are not the same. And I'll strengthen up that with some blue to give a little The roof behind that building needs lightning off because the sun is coming around the back of that building. That's better. Right, let's progress along a bit further. Just quick sweeping brush strokes. Get some more of that nice green in again I was using. So the various people say you're painting, but in fact all you're doing is making brush strokes and marks on the paper. See? Um and again they are in Varying colours of slate. Got to be a little bit careful. Most of the slate stops at the first floor level. And I'm going to put a, a colour on that one. Right. I normally don't hold the brush down as tight as this, but I am doing some quite fine work. But still, when you're doing it, you still try and try and do nice, quick strokes. Right. Let's darken that up there. Right, well, while you've been away having a cup of tea, or whatever you've been doing, I've done a little bit more, and now I'm going to start putting in just a few windows on the elevations here. And, and please, when, when you're doing windows, you don't need to put a big facade of black dots. It's to give a scale. And when they dry off and dry back, uh, they will blend in. These on this faded, I'm just going to put in and take out. There we go. And they even put a, a little horizontal in and take it out.
that just gives the indication that the buildings are coming in from that side. Do you know, I think that's enough of those. I'm going to put some shadows on the chimneys. And then I'll put, I haven't put the brickwork in yet, but I will. For some reason, France, they always make their chimneys in in brick. Always good to have a few darks in on a watercolour. Do you know, I do really think that's enough. Right. Now we'll go to the, the main building, the main subject of the building. So we need shadow on the chimneys. Don't panic, Mr. Mannering, because they look a bit dark at the moment, but you wait. Wait until they come back. It'll all fall back. Right. And we've got uh, we've got the old Cool, my hand's quite steady this morning. It's not a cross, it's for, it's what they hang the port flags on. And then here's where I'm going to smudge it. There's a flagpole there, which I know. And in a minute we should be putting the French flag on there. And then we have one on the, the rear. I believe is the mizzen, isn't it, or something like that. And then we tie those up with some rigging. At the moment it looks a bit, a little bit scarce in here, not much happening. But I've got some tables and things like that to go in. Um, and a couple of brollies in here. Oh, oh, oh. The other one is going to be white, so I'll put some clean water on there to start with, which I will leave, and then I should put blue down here to give it some base. A little bit more water. This is a picture that is going to be brought to life by the reflections. Um, these colours here reflected in the water are suddenly going to make it live, I hope. Right, let's let all that, all those dry off a little bit. And we'll come back again. Right. Now we're going to go on to the reflections and I'm not going to talk too much over this because I need to concentrate quite hard uh, to get these reflections correct. Um, they're going to be a little bit darker than the scene above which reflections always are. So please bear with me and we'll proceed.
again it just just gives it a bit of kick now i don't use uh, i don't use watercolor for this i use gouache for the simple reason that watercolor goes a bit pale quite quickly but gouache it tends to give a nice bit of bite to it i hope you can see this on the real on the actual painting itself it stands out that's better but all i'm going to do is i'm going to the, the people sitting at these benches so all i'm going to do is, is just put their heads in and the waiter coming out another this is, these are all cafes through here I'll put a little more red orange on those I think they'll stand out a little bit better and we get some people walking around the quay more on the side If you can, when you're doing objects like this, if you can, <coughs> um, you should be looking at grouping. Don't put figures all by themselves. Um, you should be grouping figures. A couple of brush strokes, just indication red top and the red tops over here and then we'll go for some a blue really striking blue Looks like black, but in fact it's not. Now, for the rest of them, I just use uh, dark blue, blue paints grey, mixed up quite thick. You don't need to actually see feet, you don't want to do feet. All you're doing is putting putting the bottom of the figure on and suddenly there they are walking about the waiter and these all you need on the on the tables is just the the trunks of the bodies because they're sitting down Got some over here. Now, also, I'm going to make them a little bit more 3D. I'm going to give them some hair. So, we'll just put little bit of black hair on just finishes it off right now we come back now we come back to a little more highlight 
and I'm going to have to wait until those figures are virtually dry, which they are. It's quite warm in here this day. We've been suffering from very bad weather. Not snow, but certainly cold. Now, adding more highlights to the figures. And this is just on the shoulders. Top of the head. Might sound fiddly. But in fact, it makes them stand out. Little bits of busy white makes it come to life. The table in the shade. <clears throat> One thing I have forgotten. Which I certainly have to put in is the ensign on the back of the back of the boat. A dab of red, a dab of blue. And while it's still wet, a dab of white. And there's the ensign. We'll put it, I think we'll put a on the top of here. Right, this is the point where we say enough is enough. I'm going to stand back and look at it. There are lots of things that I would like to improve, but with my mind half on the video, I'm afraid that's not going to happen. But what I want to do is to push this back. And the way I'm going to do this, as everybody knows, is to add a darker colour to the front. So we'll mix up some greeny blue, real sea colour, greeny blue. And this is probably where I mess it all up completely. And with a big mop. Here we go. It looks dark, but it will dry back. I'm just going to make it a little bit weaker there. <clears throat> so that has pushed the, pushed the painting back. Somewhere I have a, a card. I'm just going to make some movement on the top here. That's better. This is a bit of a trick for putting lines in on water or anything. You get a card and just dab the edge with the colour you want. 
and you can line <coughs> now you might all think that that has ruined it maybe it has maybe it hasn't but it will dry much much lighter all this dark here will come down to this color well I'm going to need to call that a day it's 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 reasonably satisfying oh wait a minute I've got some shadows I've got to put in just shows you when you're talking you do forget these things some warm shadows under this lot Quite important because it does give articulation. Right, I'm going to call that done. Because I don't really want to do any more than mess it up. Excuse my hand while I just flick the clips off. As I say, I paint behind a mask. I don't use tape because I don't like taping paintings down. Voila! The old custom house at Onfleur. Apart from tidying up the pencil lines, it's done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that, and we'll do another one sometime. Thank you. Thank you.